Good morning, students. Um, I will be talking about uh, reading of over current relay protection. Uh, so the first thing is what we need to do is in protection, we have to calculate the fault current. Uh, because that fault current will uh, determine the setting of the current. So for example, we have three faults at each plus bar. Okay. So the first thing what we need to do is we need to calculate the source impedance of the generator, how strong the generator will be, uh, and the line impedance of the feeder two and feeder one. So if we have the line impedances and the source impedance of the source or the generator, then we should be able to calculate the fault at each fault location. For instance, we can calculate the fault in feet at this fast bar because we have only source impedance where we know the voltage source of port 11 kV. It doesn't matter how much, but it's just single. So for example, uh, in this case, the, the fault in feet at this fast bar is 3.18 kilo amps. And then the full current, the this bus, it will be the source impedance plus the line impedance. Okay, so that means the total impedance after the fourth point. So that this fault current is 3.12. And then finally, the full fault current at remote in is calculate the total um, impedance, which is source impedance plus line impedance of either two plus line impedance of either one. Okay, so that now you can see the fault current is 1.59. If you look at the fault uh, current, near the generator is always strong, okay, because there is less impedance, total impedance, and then far from the source is less because the total impedance will oppose the current flow to the fault point. So in other way, we can also calculate the short circuit capacity in MB, that is root three times storage voltage or voltage supply at the fault point times the fault current at the fault point as well. That is, we call it fault level. So if we look at the sum of these four fault levels, against the impedances at the fault level. So at the fault in feet, and here the total fault current is 3.1 kilo amp, and at feeder one, that should be feeder two. At feeder two, it is 2.12 kilo amp, which is this one. And at feeder one on here, it is 1.59. In terms of fault level, if we just use this formula, then this will be 60 MV on, on the generator one, or on, on the in feet. Then 40 MV on this one, then 30 MV on here. What it tells is for near the source or the infield is strong, while for the far from the for, from the source is low or weak. Okay, so now how do we do the reading of relays? What do we need to do? What do we need to know? Okay, so here is what we need to, to know. For example, grading between two relays or relay to relay is achieved using the following information. We must have the information. For example, when we have two relays, relay one, relay one and relay two, okay? So we could do this way using this plotting gradient charts, but what are the information we needed? For example, what we need is we need to know what is the gradient margin between these two relays. For example, when the fault is happened, at maximum fault current on feeder one, on here. And how do we calculate the gradient margin of the relay? So, well, we have this formula, two times ER plus ECT over 100 times T plus TCB plus TO plus TS. Now we need to be familiarized with these um, parameters, for example, if you look up, this is the table from the IEC 618 uh, 60255. Basically, the, that's the, the book, Nansen, published in 2011. So, if you look at on this one, the T itself is the trip time of the relay. For example, 
straight time at minimum fault level. So which one is the minimum fault level? Well, this will be the fault level at the fastest or uh, end of the, the network because that's the fault level uh, at minimum. And then on this one, we could choose a lower TMS value so that we can calculate the trick time of the relay, which is relay one on here for fault on here. Then what we could do is, well, then we can plot T1, the trip time of the relay for the fault nearby is T, let's call it T1. And then the next step is we can then add this T1 with the green margin of this here, and then we can call it T2 so that this relay will trip the fault on here at time two. So that T2 will be T1 plus gradient time. Of course, this T1 is this one, plus the gradient time is this one. That then this is the trick time for the at T at time two. Then what do we need to, to, to know about the ECT? ECT is the um CT error basically. Okay. In in it depends on the on the CT time, but uh, normally the CT error is five percent, and uh, since we have two seats on here, the total CT error will be ten percent. And then the next one is what we need to do is to know is the TCB, the TCB, the trip time of the circuit breaker. Each circuit breaker we have circuit breaker one and circuit breaker two, so we need to find out how much. Usually it is fifteen millisecond. And TO is we have on this one, basically, on this time. Overall, uh, so on here parameter depend on the relay technology. The basic timing error, the overshoot time, safety margin. So the TO is the overshoot time, and the TS is the safety margin. Okay. And then ER is the basic error or the time error of the relay. Depend we have electromechanical relay, static relay, digital relay, numerical relay. So it depends on the percentage. So this is the information what we need to, to, to know. Uh, once we know this one, then uh, we can calculate what will be the um, uh, trip time of the primary protection R1 and trip time of the backup protection, which is R2, when fault is at different location. Okay. So thank you for this. Uh, please follow the next video.